Hello, Webland. I'm Don Norris, owner of Bamboo Strategy, which is a boutique micro brand strategy consulting firm. And this is Brandvertising. Today we're going to focus on what I think is a pretty topical issue, which I've heard a lot about for 15 years or so, and that's the aging consumer. And it seems to be coming more and more in focus on what are we doing as marketers, brand agencies, cons consumer consultants, whatever you want to call us in the marketing services industry. What are we doing as this huge amount of baby boomers move into the more elderly part of their years, yet they have such amazing purchasing power. For example, a 2008 study by Deloitte was showing that by that year, by 2008, over 50% of consumer spending would be happening by the 50-plus consumer. This is amazing. This is a huge shift in what marketers need to be doing and how they approach this target group. Historically, we've been concerned about them, but we always focused on the sort of that 35-year-old as the sort of denominator we wanted to build around. But now that game's totally changed. So this episode, we're going to talk about that, how, how important that group has become. In Canada, for example, manufacturers of products have, have recognized the importance of this, and they've built new products accordingly. Whirlpool has designed new washers and dryers that sit on front-loading washers and dryers are raised so that it doesn't put strain on the back. Ford is now taking into account uh, an older body and eyesight when they, when they design their cars in terms of uh, tensile strength for, for steering, etc. And then you've got a huge growth in the area of antioxidants and consumer products with consumer uh, fast food and, and mar uh, uh, consumer goods marketers of, of food products worrying about that elder consumer and how they worry about their diet and we're concerned about their diet. I don't think I'm telling you, you know, the school, one of my clients, affects it, which is the manufacturers of cold FX, and they look at developing other products, always has their eye on what that older consumer is doing, what they're looking for, how more natural it should be versus maybe a drug-oriented product. So it really is starting to impact how marketers look at it, and today we're going to focus on that. There's another number which I just wanted to bring up, which when I was doing some research for the show, and it came up that said, and it actually blew me away, that 46, yeah, 46 percent of Apple's customer base in 2009 was 55 years or older. Just think about that. 46 percent a few years ago was 55 and older, and that just blew me away. I had really no idea because you tend to think of Apple as a younger person's brand. But again, it, I was talking to someone today about it, and maybe it's got to do with that it. it's an easy to use product. The guest I'm going to bring on in a few minutes is, is a gentleman named Dave McCoggin, who's the director of strategy for McCann Erickson in Asia Pacific. He might have a point of view on that. What I want to do, though, to get us into this conversation is to show you a video, actually an ad, for uh, an insurance product uh, for retirement-oriented people, obviously, the elderly, and uh, just to get us creatively in the mood. And we come back, we'll have Dave McCoggin from McCann Erickson, and McCann World Group in Asia Pacific to talk about the elderly consumer and how marketers are looking at attracting them. My retirement? My retirement? My retirement? I'm looking forward to moving my bedroom to the first floor. I just want to watch my equity crumble. I plan to spend the rest of my retirement going no further than the end of my driveway. Prisoner in my own house. At the mercy of countless repairmen. My retirement? My retirement? I want to spend my retirement feeling like a stranger in my own neighborhood. Eating TV dinners at home alone. Watching reruns on TV all day long. In a rocking chair. In a recliner. Feeling as though I don't exist. Listening to those brats next door refer to my house as haunted. Cleaning rooms I'll never use. Watching my real estate taxes soar. I want to spend the rest of my retirement waiting for my daughter to put me in a nursing home. I want to spend my retirement depending on my son for everything. Well, there's a sort of an interesting twist, I think a very creative approach to dealing with the virility and the, the strength of the, the aging consumer and how they don't look at themselves at all as what maybe my parents or your parents, whoever's watching the show, what that generation was going through. And that's one of the issues as we talk about the elderly. Now I'd like to bring on to the show, though, a gentleman that I've known for 
do since 1995, I guess, and his name is Dave McCoggan. Dave is the director of strategic planning for McCann World Group, which is the world's largest uh, single brand marketing advertising agency. And uh, I first met Dave in 1995 when I was working in Bangkok running the Coca-Cola business. And Dave came up from Australia where he joined McCann Erickson in 1986, I believe it was. And he came up 10 years later and started his career running throughout all of Asia Pacific. So he went from Thailand, then he moved over to Hong Kong, and then he moved to Japan, which is where he now sits. And Dave is joining us from Tokyo, which I believe is about 7.30 in the morning there on uh, June 2nd. Dave, welcome to the show. Hi, Don. It's good to be talking to you again. It is. Brings back a lot of memories. <laughs> Dave, is there anything I missed that you want to talk about, about your outstanding career and how you're running strategy and directing the strategic direction for many of your clients in Asia Pacific? Well, one of the joys of my job over the last 15 years has been that I have basically a free ride to, to travel around Asia and catch up with what's going on in the biggest, fastest growing part of the world. And what that has meant is that I've got the advantage, I guess, sometimes of being able to see where things might be going to go in the West a couple of years ahead. And particularly since I moved here to Tokyo, uh, for all the recent problems in the last couple of months, the reality is that Tokyo and Japan still represent uh, probably the future for most categories in the world. And it's interesting that actually, since I've been here, I've noticed so many especially American multinationals that don't even have operations here in Japan who send people to regularly visit to look for the trends that are about to come. And so it's sort of prescient that you want to talk about the graying marketplace because, of course, Tokyo, Japan is the oldest country in the world in terms of demographic profile. And once again, we're seeing stuff happen here that, as you mentioned in the intro, lots of stuff happening around the world now. And it's interesting because Japan has had to start thinking about that a bit earlier uh, some, a lot of brands have had to come to re the reality of an aging marketplace and have really started to move forward with trying to come up with new strategies, new ways to uh, attack that potential. And, and I think that's the big point, Don, because, you know, you use the ex Apple example, and I I'll come back to examples about technology in a little while but in our discussion, but the reality is that we often forget that actually if you're a long-term future thinker, in marketing today, then actually the aging marketplace is the future. Um, we get confused in marketing. We tend to be youth happy. You know, we're always talking right. about, oh, we, we want to have a youth strategy. We want to have a youth strategy. The reality is that over the next 20 years, if you want a real strategy that's going to work, you better have a strategy for 60 year olds. Right. Right. Well, I mean, it's amazing. I was going through some numbers the other day, and 80 in the in the U.S. 80 percent of the luxury travel market is 50 is 60 plus, and the numbers just go on. You've got 41 percent of new cars bought in the in the U.S. are 50 plus. You've got 25 percent of toys that are bought. When you think about it, it's grandparents, etc. Right? That are buying 25 percent of the toys. And you're right. Most marketers have been worried about that that youth market, especially if you're in the soft drink or, or beverage category, was such a driver. So I think that's a, it's, it's a really relevant point. And what are we doing and what are marketers doing to say, hey, what's our, our aging strategy? And so right. what, what have you been doing? What have you been coming across of where's the starting point for people when they think about do we have a strategy? Should we have a strategy? And what are some of the things we need to start to think about? You know, you, your example about toys is a good place to start. I first got interested in uh, aging marketing a bit over 20 years ago back in Australia when at the po time we had a, a small client or we had a relatively small piece of business with the Matchbox toy business. You know, those little tiny toy cars that are about right. an inch and a half long. And the guy that was the account manager for that business came into my office one day and he said, Dave, I've just read this note that you sent out about how Australia's population is starting to age. So I sent it to the client and we're in big trouble now because the client wants to stop advertising. <laughs> I said, what? And he goes, well, he's read the, all the details you sent out about how the market is aging. So he said, well, there's going to be no future for the toy market in a shrinking population. And I said, no, it's exactly the opposite. The more that a population shrinks and ages, the more the toy market will boom. Because quite obviously, as we've seen in marketplaces like China, where you live for a long while, etc., when you get to a situation where you have a greater proportion of 
adults to children, what happens is those children tend to get more and more spoiled. The quality of product they get given and the cost that gets spent on them increase dramatically. And as we see aging populations go up, as you say, when parents become grandparents, all rules go out the window, right? We, right. we all know that's true. And so as this massive generation of people move into the grandparent age, all rules are gone, and they basically spend whatever they've got on their grandchildren. So if you're a toy manufacturer, if you're a, an entertainment uh, for, um, service industry for aimed at children, uh, for example, Disneyland, uh, if you're making movies, uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I went to see the new Pirates movie uh, weekend last weekend here in Tokyo, uh, took my 14-year-old son, and it was very interesting because when we came out, Alex, my son, said to me, you know, Dad, I felt a bit out of place in there. And I said, why? And he goes, well, because I was about the oldest kid and you were about the youngest adult. Um, <laughs> and it was all grandparents taking their, their small grandchildren to see Johnny Depp. Um, and I think that's the thing. You know, we forget that the whole dynamic has changed and there's a lot of potential going on. So what's an example? What have you seen, and whether it's a client directly of, of McCann in Asia Pacific or globally or anybody else, that, that's actually done something that's been targeted directly that our viewers might be able to, um, to comment on or see? And by the way, viewers, feel free to be clicking in and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll read some of the comments you have if they come on. So what are some exact comments that you might want to show, Dave, or talk about? Okay, let me let me just start off though. Could you just pull up that that first chart that uh, I sent across? Yeah. Um, let me just start off with this. One of the issues that when you think about the aging population that most marketers forget about, because let's face it, most people in marketing and ad agencies, when you're talking to brand managers, they tend to be 35 to 40 if you're lucky, and if you're talking to the senior account guy at your ad agency, well, you know, he's 41. You know, and so to all of these people, it's sort of like, oh, yeah, yeah, you mean the old people. Well, right. no, it's not. Because the truth of the matter is, first of all, the world is aging dramatically. Here in Asia, for example, marketers always talk about the youth of Asia and how it's such a young part of the world. And it is. But I can tell you that in every single Asian country, except for two, the fastest growing segment of the population is 60 plus. And the only two exceptions are North Korea and Bhutan. And I don't know about Bhutan because I can't get the figures, but in North Korea it's quite simply and sadly because nobody lives to be 60. Right. But the reality is in every other country, India, Indonesia, all these marketplaces, the population is getting older. The fastest growing segment is the aged or aging population. But all those people are really trying to be younger or at least maintain their youth on the inside. And the two photos on the right-hand side of two, two photos, there's a, a very sad-looking Japanese gentleman sitting at the top. Now, this is quite often the image that we have of marketers here in Japan. Uh, sorry, marketers have of um, the aging population. But this is a guy who's 60 who's about to retire, and he's basically exhausted, dead, sitting on a couch, flagged out, and he basically, in the old interpretation of retirement, he was literally waiting to die. The photo beneath is actually what he's really doing. If you think about, all jokes aside, if you think about the Japanese salaryman who's about to retire, 60 years old, he's just spent 40, uh, 37 years in the workforce, usually working for the one company. And what does he consistently be doing in that company? He's been training to become the greatest singer in the world because what does he do he goes out to karaoke three four nights a week with the guys from work with his clients and what does he do he sings the songs that are in his heart so to go to your point about interesting things that have happened in 2007 the baby boomer generation of japan first started to retire we have 60 uh, 60 years of age is retirement here right and Sorry, in, in 2007. And what was interesting was the fastest growing category of product in 2007 of all crack categories in Japan was electric guitars. <laughs> it grew faster than anything else. And why? Because all of these guys who basically literally said, when I was in college, I was in a band or I wanted to be in a band, but then I started work. And in typically good Japanese fashion, they gave up all hobbies for the next 30-odd years. 
when they got to retirement, give me back the, give me the guitar, I'm reforming my band, which they literally did. And what we've then seen is that a bunch of um, bar owners, uh, particularly those people that own chains of bars, have now started to put in things that we've been doing for years with young people, you know, rock nights, uh, uh, battle of the bands nights and those sorts of things, but they're all limited. You have to be 60 years of age to perform. Right. You, anybody can turn up in the audience, but you have to be 60 plus to perform. And it's been an amazing growth uh, as we've seen the whole nightlife sector sort of swing around and you've got people going to see basically their parents, uh, people their parents' age, in a band, right? So, Dave, if from a marketer's point of view, for everybody watching, then go, okay, great, I've, I've got this huge demographic so right. shifting through, right? I mean, and if I target too much to them, do I? And I don't have enough money to have a, an aged strategy and a youth strategy. And if I show too much to the youth, you know, is some youth going to look? Well, I mean, I'll to the aged. Ex- yeah, go ahead, Dave. I'll give, give you an example. All these, all these people started to flock to bars to watch these bands, reform bands, okay? Now, back in the, back in the day when these guys that are 60-something were young, hotshot executives, you know, like you used to be, um, they were drinking highballs. Now, highballs went dramatically out of fashion here. What's been interesting is that Suntory, which is the biggest whiskey maker in Japan, has captured that again, gone back in, re-released highballs as a concept in bars and because the, the the old guys the cool guys up on stage started drinking highballs it became cool again for the younger people in the audience and what we've now seen is that highballs over the last year and a half have become the drink to drink in bars no matter what your age and so there are now not only highballs made of whiskey but then the sake manufacturers got onto this and sake which is a very you know big obviously category in Japan, but a little bit conservative and certainly certainly aged in its drinking profile, has released now canned highballs made of sake, which has become the hottest canned ready-to-drink beverage in the country for young people. So what we see is that the old can actually become the trendsetters for the young, and we start starting to see that in a number of categories. Uh, as people, for example, you mentioned cars, Now, what we're starting to see in Japan, which is a very stagnant car market in terms of overall sales in the last few years, and particularly because young people under 30, 35 don't buy motor vehicles in this country. In fact, it's quite often said in a lot of research that young guys would prefer to buy a more elaborate phone and spend all their money on the services of the phone than a car because it gives them more freedom. Right. Now, there's a lot of structural reasons for that. But what's been happening is that there's, the car manufacturers are now playing up uh, new sports editions of cars, which are being driven around by guys in their 60s. But now they're starting to see a pickup where young guys are now saying, well, that's the big aspirational thing, is to have a car like this. Very cool, very modern sports cars. But, oh, i got to be like that guy who's obviously very successful, so I want a car like that. Okay, okay, Dan, so that's to my point. And before I get... And I have a question from one of the viewers I'll ask after my point is, you know, it used to be when we we do casting for creative, whether it's a print shoot or a TV shoot or an online shoot, whatever it was, you know, and the target was 25 to 45. We'd shoot for that that core. Well, let's get a 35 year old right in the center. Then we don't want to be too old. We want to be too young because that's the aspiration, right? The the old want to look young and feel young again. And then the 18 year old wants to say, well, hey, 35 is a sweet spot of success. Are you saying that? Because this boomer generation continues to redefine everything that's moved through and as they're going to redefine aging and, and retirement as well, that they're going to carry that cool factor all the way through? Well, not on everything. I mean, yesterday I was actually in a workshop. We were talking about men's underwear brands, and we noted that nobody is sort of doing men's underwear ads featuring 60-year-olds with their beer guts, <laughs> which, uh, that may not be too aspirational. You know? <laughs> Point taken. Um, okay, hey, let's get. The, but, I want to get the question, Dave, that, that someone's asked. Evan, do you want to read it out? Yeah, uh, Mac from the chat room asks: Given the high rate of divorce, uh, there are more and more single aging men and women. Are marketers in tune with this? Yeah, that's a, a big issue, and I think that's going to become the next big issue. Um, if you could go to the next chart, um, that. You know, I said across, it, it talks about active new life builders. Uh, 
you know, we talk about this aging population as new life builders because we found if you do use the term aging, grey, silvers, everybody gets offended, right? But right. When, you, when you get to the reality that in today's world, if you take Japan, for example, a woman that's 60-year-old today in Japan will live on average to be 93. Um, so she's got more than a third of a life to go. It's very active. And if you follow this chart through, all that's simply saying is that we've noted that there are various stages in the ageing process that people go through and that those stages are aligned with, um, if you like, getting almost resisting ageing and the fact when you're 60 and through to 70, you don't feel old at all. You feel just as young as you ever did and you just want to do the things you used to do when you're young. So you have to be marketing to that. In the 70s, things start to change because the body does start to deteriorate a bit, so you have to come to grips with that, and there's an awareness of some limitations. More importantly to to your um, viewer's question, what really happens is that in the mid-70s, you've got a a double bind. You've not only got in many countries the fact that divorce has started to set in, and there's that post-retirement divorce that seems to be leaping up around the world where people suddenly realise you know what, we've been living together for 35 years, but that was okay because I was at work and you were at work or you were doing your thing, I was doing my thing, but now we're together all the time. Oh, God, this is boring. So that divorce rate goes up, and then when they get to their 70s, unfortunately, us we men, we die quicker. Um, and so you see a massive leap in the number of single women uh, going up. And what's happening is that more and more marketers are now having to target the factor of uh, single households, Uh, target the factor of increasing numbers of single women um, disproportionately to the number of single men. And so what you're starting to see, for example, is not only what we saw, say, with L'Oreal when they hired Jane Fonda as a spokesperson a few years ago to represent that they were getting into the ageing marketplace, but with these new women, new life builders in particular, what we're starting to see is a whole range of cosmetics, personal care products, etc., that are now saying, you know, you can be who you want to be. You're not, it's not about covering the crow's feet and trying to look younger. It's actually representing who you really feel inside. And you're seeing a big dramatic change in the way in which marketers are targeting that. And I think that's got to do with the growing singles market, that it's about availability um, and the desire to be not only directly looking for a guy or a man looking for a woman, but also this idea of, uh, how do I actually feel comfortable with myself a lot more? Well, that's true. There, there's the inner side, but there's also the, the outer side, which is still very relevant with, with you know, medical spas, you know, with the growth of Botox and, and Thermage and all these other treatments, of, you know, growing and being very successful as, as men and women, primarily women, but men as well, you know, do, hey, if I can actually reduce that crow feed a little bit, Hey, and it's not going to cost too much, or it's really not a cost issue, but it makes me feel better, then I'll do that. And we know in North America, it's a huge growth area as those spas continue Massive. to take off. Massive. So yeah, it's funny you say that. Uh, two weeks ago, I went to the Global You had spa Botox, summit. Dave? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, yeah. Many times. Yeah. That's, <laughs> um, no, uh, uh, two weeks ago, I went to the Global Spa Summit, which is a gathering around the world of all the top executives from spa, the spa industry. Right. And it was very interesting because... First of all, I have to say the average age of the people at this, 300 people this summer, the average age of these people would have been late 50s. Um, secondly, their target is people in, uh, that are older than them. That they've realised that people, obviously lots and lots of young people enjoy going for a massage, go to spa, sit in a bath, it's nice smells, all that sort of stuff. But what they've realised, of course, is that the value content really is, is, is people that are in their 50s, 60s and early 70s that they tend to come back more frequently. They will pay uh, a higher level of cost for better care. Uh, They really want some more therapeutic care. They want the higher-end products. And and so there's a real targeting of the whole spa industry uh, towards that age group, which is, again, because people in their 60s and early 70s are not about fading away. It's all about rejuvenation. It's all about making me feel like I feel on the inside, that that 19-year-old that's never left left. My, my heart. Right. Now, Dave, I know you've got an, an ad or two you want to show. I'm just conscious of time here as well. Which, sure. which, which ad would you like to go through? Well, let, let me start off with uh, two ads about del- food. Um, okay. They're both from Japan. So if we go first to the 7-Eleven spot. Okay, we'll pull that up. Just play it now, Evan, if you can. 
セブン＆アイ。自分の遠くまで行かなくても、手間暇かけた美味しさ、楽しんでください。毎日の食材も一流料理店の味わいもすぐそばに。日本の美味しい食卓へ。近くて便利。セブンイレブンです。Now my few trips to Japan, I certainly didn't learn the language as well as you do. So what's that spot all about, Dave? Well, the theme of the spot is next to me, okay, and it's all about the fact that it's about for delicious Japanese tables. And what it's saying is that you can enjoy life together and yeah, you know, really come together with in life and enjoy delicious, great Japanese food, which Japanese people take very seriously.、Um, Think about it. This is Seven Eleven, okay? And while Seven Eleven in Japan is maybe more sophisticated and certainly provides a greater range of services, etc., than the experience in North America, it's Seven Eleven. It's a convenience store. And what it's really saying is that you can have a great home food experience provided to you by Seven Eleven, and more importantly, they're targeting people who are evidently, you know, in their late sixties and seventies. And more importantly, it's the social message. It's this message, as I said, as couples have seen this, this strain of suddenly living together permanently all the time. They're saying, "Well, no, you can enjoy time together," and that really backs into a piece of research that we found, which was that many Japanese elderly couples, and we're seeing this now in other Asian markets, tell us that when they get into a retirement situation, after the first six months or so, they sort of come to an agreement, and the agreement is. We're going to do our own thing and come together maybe two or three times a week to have special moments together. That special outing to a special cafe or that special dinner, and that'll be the moments when we really draw together and feel that we're sharing again. But we we can't spend 24 hours a day just rubbing up against each other. Right. Okay. That, if we can go to the next commercial, this is for Watami, and and I'll explain it once you've seen it. Okay. Waiting people. So I. お弁当を届けます。お客様からのありがとうが私の元気になっていると思うんです。毎日作って毎日お届け、バタに着色です。Okay, the message here is pretty simple. It's about home-delivered food. Okay, and I know that in many places in North America there are many services,、uh, public services, etc., that deliver food to、uh, basically a housebound elderly. Right. What's interesting here is Watami is a company who started off and still are the largest owner of isekais. Isekais are small bars, but they basically,、uh, if you like, a, a company that owns alcohol retail places, but bars. Right. And what happened was about ten years ago, the owner of this company figured out that his business was dying. But as because of the you know the Japan economy has sort of been a bit static, the golden years of going out five nights a week after work and taking clients out has sort of disappeared, and so the bar market was sort of drying up. So what do I do? What do I do? Now Japanese bars, these isekais, very small venues with only eight to twelve seats, but you go there to drink, but you also have a very very high standard of bar snacks. Bar food.、Right. So this guy figured out I've got tons of chefs who know how to make great food. What can I do? The marketplace is aging. Let's sell food to the aged. So he actually developed the first home food delivery service commercially in Japan. He now has thousands of these people who deliver food to literally hundreds of thousands of the elderly around the world,、uh, around Japan, I should say. But what's really interesting is. That in the commercial you saw, it's a young lady who delivers the food to an older woman. Now what he's doing is he's, he's, he's what he's called recycling aging. What that means is that he actually recruits people in their 60s to come and work for him part time to deliver the food to people that are housebound and maybe a few years older than them. And what of course happens is that these younger retirees are finding this is great. Somebody's actually paying me to go and talk to other people, to meet new people all the time, to make new friends. And then what happens after a few years, as they then become maybe a little bit more housebound, etc., etc., they swap around and they become the watami recipients of the food services. Right. And. And it becomes a constant cycle of business, if you like. Well, I think that's a great example for viewers to to keep in mind. In the sense is, if if your business is suffering, 
is to do the work, to do some digging, do some research and understanding, well, if I'm losing business in one area, why is that? And other opportunities can then present themselves. So it's a fantastic example. Dave, I'm uh, calling... Go ahead, Sorry. Dave. No. If we've got time for one more spot. Sure. Have we got that? Yep. Yeah. Let's have a look at this spot. It's called Art Academy. Tu joues toi maintenant Je joue pas. Je dessine un paysage. Regarde, en mettant une grille, je n'ai plus qu'à dessiner case après case et ça devient beaucoup plus facile. Et tu me laisses essayer Et je m'en tire pas trop mal. Oui, même toi tu peux y arriver. <rire> Apprenez pas à pas à dessiner et impressionnez vos proches avec vos créations. Art Academy sur Nintendo DS et Nintendo DSi. Well, that I know isn't Japanese. So, you know, I'm Canadian. Not. My French isn't all that strong. So, again, what's happening there? But I think this ad is very symbolic of that fact you mentioned right at the beginning about the, we misinterpret this idea that the aging population is technically inept. Um, Nintendo is, I think, the number one aging marketing company in the world. And it also embodies something you just mentioned. Here is a company that sat in an industry that we think of as all about youth. You know, the gaming, the right. online, uh, the, the computer gaming business. And, you know, a few years ago, they came up with a series of products that have not only changed that whole industry around, but really proved to the world that you can take any category and you can make it appropriate for an aging population. First with their brain games, uh, and software, then when the Wii machine and the, and the Wii Fit software, you know, in Japan, doctors now prescribe Wii Fit um, to aging patients. Right. They actually prescribe, go buy a Nintendo machine, put your Wii Fit on there, and then what happens is the doctor can tap in online to track your actually performing your Wii Fit exercises every day to see if you're doing your routines and whether or not that's in line with what he's prescribed you to do. Um, Amazing, and so yeah. I think, yeah, so I think Nintendo, you know, that commercial is just one of many, many commercials you'd see around the world about how they are actively targeting uh, the aging population with technologies that are just extremely easy to use, but can be used to follow any hobby, any interest. It doesn't have to be the new wave of things. It can be just as simple as take an art class, you know, through a, a pocket computer system. So, Dave, in closing, what would be the one or two pieces of advice that you'd give a, a marketer that might be watching this show or a business owner about the, the aging marketplace? Well, again, if I go back to that last commercial, one simple point um, that I forgot to mention is listen to the music that's in the background, then listen to the music that's in the background of the Watami spot. Both, in both cases, that music was big hits 30, 40 years ago. Right. And, of course, in marketing, Don, you and I both know that one of the secrets of making good commercials is you find out the age of your typical audience, you find a, a, a piece of music that was a hit when that person was 19 years old and put it in the background. And this is the point. These people are not dying. They're actually 19-year-olds who want to just keep on being 19. They just right. happen to live in older bodies. And so give them the facility to actually act out what they want to do in their hearts. Very good advice, Dave. Well, that's uh, we've run out of our time. Uh, I'd want to thank Dave McCoggan, who, again, is the Director of Strategic Planning for McCann World Group in Asia Pacific. Uh, a fantastic resource, as I'm sure many of you have heard. You can click on to McCann uh, World Group dot com or Dave, do you have a direct email anywhere people may be able to get a hold of you? Sure. Dave dot McCoggan at Japan dot McCann dot com. Fantastic. And Dave, great to see you again. Um, we'll talk to we'll talk a little bit later. And thanks again, Dave, for taking the time and getting up early in Tokyo. What is it there now? Eight thirty? It's just coming up for twenty to eight. There you go. Well, thanks again. Yeah. And now you can go eat breakfast. Thank you very much. <laughs> thanks, Dave. <laughs> Now, just to close the show, I want to show a, a, a video clip here of a, of a commercial, uh, which is, is, a, is a funny little spot. It, it's for basically a, a, an art academy in London that's trying to attract people to become better copywriters or get into the advertising world. And this is not your typical how do we deal with, with the aging community in a sensitive manner. It's sort of using the aged 
as a foil, if you will, of, of typical understanding of what it's at. And it, listen, if you don't go and get the proper education, you could end up like these guys. But I thought it's a nice way to sort of end uh, our discussion on aging with a little bit of a smile. So have a look at that, and then I'll come back and we'll close this episode of Brand Advertising. We resented Dad when we were kids. We never had any money to do normal things. We had three jobs, God rest his soul. But at least he knows what he wants to do. Some people never have that, do they? Look, the logo's too big. The logo is not too big. I've sacrificed a lot for advertising. I'm never married. No children. Sometimes I think we should just split up. My life could have been very different. You can't even draw. We bought the umbrellas. Oh no, well, that would have helped. But still, never mind. Yeah, come on. Here we go. Now, this is our big chance. So yeah. let's play this carefully and see how we go. All right. Yeah. Now, what, 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 what if it? sure about the art direction. You know, the lines are there, but you need to do something to stand out a bit more. Yeah, a bit of a well-worn path, that, you know. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate puns. Well, I don't know. We should have. You oh, know, fucking have no, done just that. shut up. I'm fucking. Oh, Johnny, you're all right. You're all right, old chap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah take it easy. You'll be all right. Yeah. Bloody bloke, it was coloured line. You couldn't see the thing, could you? Cheers. Cheers, yes. I didn't see it, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Listen, can you? You don't speak? What? No, there's no, 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 nothing interested, and I don't know why I haven't paid it. I think that last bit sort of sums up the point. You've got an elderly gentleman trying to mingle, communicate with the younger generation, and the younger generation wants nothing to do with them. The point of this episode was if you're in a business, if you're a marketer, or you're in any sort of brand communication, you as a younger generation, and there were anybody under 50, need to very much communicate and understand what makes the 50 plus generation go because they have the purchasing power. They will be buying your products or services for years and years to come and may keep you in business. Probably will keep you in business. So don't ignore them. Actually get to understand them, dig under their skin, do the research, talk to them, do some insight groups, work with anybody to get a better feel on what makes the, the generation 50 plus tick. They're not all the typical that you were born to believe when you hit 50, you look like you're 80. As you know now, as you get closer to it, you still feel younger and you have a lot to give and a lot more to that you want to do in life. So get to know them, connect with them, understand what makes them tick, understand the drivers, and get out there and market to them. So again, thank you very much for watching this episode of Brand Advertising. I'm Don Norris. And I'm the owner of Bamboo Strategy, which is a boutique marketing and branding agency based here in uh, Western Canada, right here in Edmonton. So thanks again, and we'll see you next time on Brand Advertising.